Yo, I'll be honest. As a kid growing up on the islands, I wasn't a fan of soup. The occasional soup Saturday, yeah. On a regular basis, not so much. But when it is minus one degree Celsius outside, I might need that comfort food. Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. We've done several chicken soup recipes before. I teased this one we're about to do right now on Instagram and a lot of you, yo Chris, drop me knowledge now. So here we go. We're gonna use split peas, we're gonna use dumpling, coconut milk, and chicken. I mean, whatever else we find in the fridge. But today, another version of a Caribbean style chicken soup. You're gonna love this one. A nice big wide deep soup pot on a medium heat a tablespoon and a half of olive oil and while it's still cold I'm gonna go in with the onion and that's just one medium onion that I sliced up a small scotch bonnet pepper seeds and everything if you're concerned about the heat you, you can leave it out first of all or two don't add as much and don't add the um, the seeds that I added there and the white membrane surrounding the seeds. I have about six cloves of garlic that I just gave a smash. I really don't want my garlic to burn so I turned my heat down to low. It's been going for about two minutes now and here's where we're going to add some Caribbean green seasoning to the mix. And I'm going in with a heaping tablespoon of that and Caribbean green seasoning if you're new to Caribbean cooking and I say this in just about every recipe it's one of them versatile seasonings that we add to just about everything we cook and all it is is a puree or a blend of the herbs we like using so you got Spanish thyme, shadow benny, cilantro, parsley, thyme along with garlic and seasoning peppers in there my heat is on low and I usually blend it in, in, in olive oil and I keep it in the fridge whenever I want to use it. It's there, similar to how our Spanish brethren got sofrito, our Haitian brothers and sisters got a piece. The English speaking Caribbean got Caribbean green seasoning. Fresh ground black pepper. And I want a nice dose of that. Give that a little mix and mix. Remember the heat is on low now couple minutes on that low heat with the Caribbean green seasoning and I'm gonna go in I have two chicken stock cubes I'm just gonna break up and put into the pot here so when I hit that another quick stir and if it didn't break up if you see like little chunks of that chicken stock cube you can um, once that comes to a boil, all of that will melt down, so don't fret too much. I've got some fresh thyme from the garden, and the green seasoning already has thyme in there, but I just like heightening the flavors that I like, and of course I like fresh thyme. It's one of them things, that one, probably one of the few herbs that I really, really enjoy using. Now here's where I'm going to add my washed. Split, plea, split peas, and that is just yellow split peas. Um, dry, but um, I've washed it and rinsed it out properly. I've drained it. I'm gonna crank my heater back to medium now. And I just want to coat those pieces, well not pieces, the peas, with all that flavor that we got down there. I'm gonna crank my heat up to high now because here's where we're gonna add the liquid to braise this or to break it down to get nice and tender and this is what's going to help thicken up the soup if you're new to Caribbean cooking our soups are more like a North American stew full of body and thick and just pure niceness and that liquid is courtesy of two cups of coconut milk give that another little stir scrape the bottom to sort of deglaze the bottom that's all that niceness happening down in the bottom there and hot water now we'll need to add more water later on so we started off there with that's about five cups of water we're gonna bring this up to a boil
as all those wonderful flavors comes together in that pot there this is where we will season and marinate the chicken now and I have here about four and a half pounds closer to four pounds of chicken because after I remove more of the skin and the fat and it's cut serving size pieces now here's the thing these are chicken legs with the back attached so there's bones the key to this soup in my humble opinion is you want chicken with bones now if you wanted to do it with just chicken breast you can certainly do that as well too we're gonna go in with about three quarter teaspoon of salt now remember when we we started off the soup the base we had two chicken stock that chicken stock is gonna be heavy in sodium so be mindful of that yeah we will be adding a lot of potato and stuff like that later on and at that point we'll taste for salt and adjust but for now salt black pepper the chicken um, cut up into small pieces as I said now be mindful when you are serving this tell your guests tell your family listen there is bones in this thing here now if you want to do a combination and the recipe you saw me tease on 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 instagram oh i stutter in now boy like i excited to eat anyhow that recipe i did with leftover chicken i had in the freezer i had two chicken legs and a couple chicken breasts so it will work with chicken breast or a combination and you saw me go in with another heaping tablespoon of that caribbean green seasoning we're gonna let this marinate now for the next it's gonna be about 30 minutes now that's what we have left of the 45 minutes i said we needed to cook that peas down i'm not sure if i said it yet but we need about 45 minutes to break down that yellow split peas it's gonna go into the fridge because i want to keep it at the right temperature until we're ready for adding it to the pot so the peas are nice and tender, it's starting to fall apart now, and notice how thick it got. Um, we're going to add more liquid, so don't be too stressed about this, but the whole idea is something nice and thick too at the end, alright? Here is where now we're going to add all that seasoned chicken to the pot. Give it a nice little scrape. Turn your heat back up to high because we want to bring that back up to a boil. And I know some of you are thinking, well Chris, why didn't we start with the chicken first, give it some color, to remove it and then add it. You can certainly do that, but I find this way most effective for me. I just love doing it like this. It's sort of a, a poached chicken in here. We're gonna bring that up to a boil and then we're gonna start adding the other ingredients along with more hot water. The same bowl where I marinated the chicken, I'm gonna add about six more, six to eight more cups of hot water to that, swish it around and add it to the pot. I added the water to the pot here. Now, as this starts coming up to a boil, here's where I'm gonna start adding the body of this soup. And that is complements of some potato. I've got some edos. If you have dashin or taro, you can certainly rock that. And you'll notice the pieces are nice and big because I'm gonna cook this for another hour or so. And I want that to maintain a bit of texture. So once it starts falling apart, um, there will still be quite a bit of texture and body and the last thing I like doing is adding, well not last thing but this is what I have on hand, this is what I have in the fridge, that is sweet potato. So everything is going in there and you know here's the thing about that. This was prepped in advance and I have it in a, in a bowl with water. So it's one of the things where you can prep, have it ready and you know, pull it all together. We're going to go in with some more water. And this is why you need a big old pot boy. We're gonna give that a stir and we want that to come up to a boil. It'll take about four minutes for it to come back up to a boil. What we wanna do now is reduce it to a sort of a simmer and let that go. Now here's the thing, I, I used what I had on hand. So if you have dashin, if you have taro, well taro and dashin is pretty much the same thing. If you have yam, you can add yam to this. If you have green cooking banana, you can add it to here. If you have cassava or maniac or yuca, you can add it in here. And I have a little scotch bonnet pepper. Yeah, the shape is a kind of a bit different this year for some reason. It almost looks like a pimento pepper, but I assure you that is pure heat there. I'm not gonna break it until later on when I'm eating. But for now, low heat, simmer, and let that go until everything is nice and tender. We want the chicken fully cooked and in a bit, I'm going to show you guys how to make the flour dumplings to add to this. Yes, a soup. Yo, oh, Caribbean people love wheat dumpling and wheat soup, man. It's been going for about half an hour now. 
and everything is coming together nicely. The potato is starting to fall apart, the edos, the sweet potato, everything is starting to fall apart. That's going to help thicken things up. Now be mindful, and I keep saying be mindful as we go through the soup, that later on it will thicken up considerably when you turn the stove off. So you really want it to be a, a little bit more thinner than what you want it at this point. Now we're going to add two more things here. And what I have here in my, my, my little freezer bag is some taro or dashin that I had from the last time I made soup. Still frozen. And whenever I have extra, I usually buy it. And I, well, when I have extra, I cut it up, I peel it, I cut it up, and I put it into the freezer. I'm just going to add that to there. And the reason why I'm adding it now is because I know that cooks really fast. The other thing we're going to add here is some flour dumplings. So let's make those dumplings now. My sincere apologies. I thought the camera was rolling. It wasn't rolling. And what I have here is two cups of all-purpose flour, a pinch of salt, and some light brown sugar. Yeah, I have about a teaspoon of light brown sugar in there. And what I was saying when I thought it was filming is that that brown sugar little tip there that comes from my friend from Barbados. His mom showed me how to do these dumplings. And ever since then, any dumpling for soup that I'm making, it's, it must have that little bit of brown sugar in it. We're going to work this until it comes together and form a little dough. And then we're going to allow it to rest for about five minutes before we make the actual dumplings. You need some flour on your surface. And I had a damp paper towel over the, um, the dough ball here. And that is a nice, nice and soft. I'm just gonna give it one more little work over, like so. Roll it around in the flour. And I like making nice, thin, cube looking dumplings. So I have my my rolling pin, and we're just going to roll this out to as thin as you can probably get it. Now that is just my preference, yeah? If you guys like a thicker dumpling, by all means do so, but remember once it goes into that hot liquid it will swell a bit, it will get thicker. Now you're probably watching this soup and thinking, well Chris you've done something similar to this before, and you're quite right, we've done quite a few different chicken soup in the past. This one like the one I teased on Instagram, you will see slight nuances, slight differences, which makes this a little bit more unique. To the thickness that I want it, and I like employing the use of a pizza cutter. So much easier. And you're going about two centimeters square. Yeah, small dumplings, but it's going to fit on your soup spoon perfectly. If you want to make bigger dumplings, if you want to make spinners, by all means, you can do that. I'm just going to go across now, like so. And it's how easy that pizza cutter makes it, right? This one here I brought back from Italy when we were in Italy. I think this one, not Milan, I'm a room, um, Pisa, Leaning Tower Pisa. I think I bought it when we were there. And all you would do now is pick that up and start putting them into the boiling liquid. And we're almost done. At one point we've got to taste for salt, but only after we're done adding these to the pot. Give it a stir as you keep adding them to the pot because you don't want them touching because they will want to to stick together. So as I do that, I'm just going to hit it a quick little stir and keep adding more. <laughs> Sup soldiers? Listen, if you enjoy this recipe, I'd really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and click that bell notification thing. If you've made the recipe, take a picture and send it to me, email address down here. I mean, trying to tell people the email address, them butts will take the address and do all kind of thing with it. And tag me on Instagram at Caribbean Pod. I really appreciate you guys and thanks for being in my kitchen with me today. Irene, Irene. And those flour dumplings will only take about five minutes to cook. So what I'm going to do is 
sign off here. Now here's where you would taste it for salt and adjust it to your own liking. Um, you have the opportunity now to break that scotch bonnet pepper if you wanted. Totally up to you. Remember that's going to release the beast. It's going to be a lot of heat. Now notice how thick this is. It will thicken up even further as it cools down. The final thing I like going in with there is a bit of parsley just to brighten it up a little bit. Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. Yet another chicken soup, but you would have seen differences in this one versus the others I shared with you. Enjoy all the evening. Enjoy all the day, all the morning, whatever it is. And, yo, leave a comment down below now. I love that man. Irie? Irie.